some people don't have an inner monologue, you know. <laughs> no, it's true. I found out this the, a couple of weeks ago that some people don't have, like, they can't talk things through in their head. It's like a proper medical thing that they don't they don't have it. Feels made up. <laughs> I mean, I could be making it up right now, couldn't I? Really? Oh yeah, but... yeah. I don't mean you making up. I mean people. <laughs> I find it quite difficult to get my head round that, you know, because it's so alien to what we. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming you. This could be a really weird thing when I asked you about it, and you went, "What do you mean, in the monologue? What are you talking about?" <laughs> should, should we should we assume we're on? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, not bad. How are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm all right, mate. I'm no, problem. let's really... make it let's make it spontaneous and cool. Yeah, like we've not already right, spoke yeah. for the majority of today yeah. again. Let's do that really horrible thing, you know, where they go, um, "Oh, could you please subscribe and and like and rate and review and all that." Follow, like, subscribe. Um, Apple Podcasts app, especially if you can rate and review us, that'd be smashing. So, what have you been uh, watching, listening, reading this week? What have you been doing? I don't know. Because, um, you know, because we're dead spontaneous and live in the moment, but we still, you know, pre-plan these conversations. I literally can't remember a single thing we are meant to say. <laughs> you go first. What have you been doing? And it'll see if so, it'll spark it. Um, I watched um, a documentary series on Netflix called Night Stalker, or The Night go. Stalker. Yeah. yeah. Um, criminal, criminal one. Um it basically charts the the investigating of the of the crime, so not like the courtroom side of it. It goes up to um, them arresting the the, the person, um, and it's quite a good documentary. As in, it's all talking heads, so there's no there's no like narrator like oh, like dubbing over, like saying, "Oh, and then on this date, this happened." The closest you get is um, writing pops up telling you like who the victims were, the age. Yeah. Um, and possibly I think the yeah it tells you the date so the time between um, the murders and how it escalates but it's all interviews with people who were there at the time right. and it's kind of it's it's kind of refreshing in a way because it is that it's a warts and all sort of thing because they do talk about the you know the fumbles that they did and and the mistakes whether or not it's um, the press getting too too involved and giving and you know Giving up, giving information out to the public that they shouldn't have. There's a mayor yeah. of of, a, of um, I think it might be San Diego, where she gives a load of information out in a press like junket that the coppers are just there going, well, all that evidence going forward is not going to be useful because they're going to stop their, <laughs> going to change their mo. Yeah. And it's things like not setting up panic alarms, so they don't wire those alarms incorrectly. So when they press them, they there's no alert going out and they miss the the person and all this, but. Yeah, it's quite it's quite a good document. It's not particularly gruesome, which is which is good for some people, but it's a, it's very informative. I've got a bit of a. I assume you know where I'm going with this. I've got a bit of a weird thing about true crime documentaries or just crime documentaries because. And this is exactly what I was going to go yeah, on to next. But yeah, go for it. I so, I've always been into like weird films, um, horror, cult stuff, violent stuff, gritty stuff, thrillers, whatever. Um, and, well, not even just films. Films is the obvious example because films and video games are the ones that people tout as being bad influences and all that. Um, and even with comedy, video nasties they used to call them, didn't they? Exactly. And and even like yeah. comedy, for example, people try and cancel comedians or you know silence them for bad jokes and that. Or I say bad jokes for it should be done for bad jokes, but for, <laughs> for no, they normally um, get away with them. Yeah. Like it's, uh, yeah. I'm thinking but, Frankie Boyle and the Queen joke and all that. And it was... <laughs> well, exactly. They'll try and cancel people yeah. and like, oh, it's violent. You're inciting violence and stuff. And it's like, no, no, no. It's, it's art. And pe- people have their own limits as to what offends them, what upsets oh, yeah, them, what they think is is too far. But ultimately, it's very subjective. And again, it's art. As pretentious as that sounds, I apologise. Yeah. Yet with true crime documentaries or even just sort of people's experience and telling of crime stuff there's like this weird excitement yeah. and this fascination and if it was just fascination in terms of wanting to learn and it, it seems interesting and it seems scary I get it because I also love history and obviously there's war documentaries but when it comes to like serial killer stuff for example especially there's this weird thing where people really get a buzz out of it and for me that's always affected my enjoyment of it because from a purely almost cold and clinical point of view it is interesting to think about yeah. what horrible things 
one person can do and how much they can get away with and how long things can go on for. But people's reaction to it, it feels so hypocritical. Like so many people, like I know, like I'm not saying you, I've seen, I know people who, who, who yeah, will, okay, who, Lou, thanks. <laughs> they'll, 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 you know, they'll almost be like, oh, how can you watch, um, how can you watch, you know, this film or that film or how can you like this comedian? The jokes, they, they tell jokes about these horrible things. I'm like, yeah, yeah. but, I also hear you going, yeah, Ted Bundy, he was dead good looking though, wasn't he? It's like, why are you celebrating this monster? Yeah, it, it's, for, for me personally, I think, even though it's going to sound like I pre-planned it, that, the the not having the inner monologue thing, yeah, and I can't get my head around it because obviously I have an inner, I have an inner monologue. That's almost one of the reasons, or not that particular, but that's the, the feeling that I get when I watch one of these true crime things is how can somebody... I just find it very interesting that somebody lives in the same, you know, the same world that I that I do, um, but has such a completely like distorted version of what they want to do in that world and yeah. what is acceptable. It's a different for reality, isn't it? A hundred percent. And I think that's what I find really interesting. But I do get the sort of that voyeurism um, and the scandal side of it that people, you know, get a little bit too buzzed off it. You go, yeah. At the, you know, at the end of the day, like these are people that were that were hurt, you know, killed in these in these in these things, and I'm not trying to say you can't get any enjoyment out of them, but it's just a. I, I even I even don't like using the word enjoyment because it's not. It that feels strange to me. That feels really. It, it almost as if I'm putting their experiences up for entertainment, and it's it's yeah. not like that. Yeah. I just find it really interesting. I think it's. A lot of people end up doing this when the older they get, the more they start to really enjoy like history. If you didn't enjoy it in school, whatever. But then the older you get, like you, I have found, a lot of my my friends have said like, "Oh God, I wish I had the buzz that I have now for learning history and stuff back in school because I would have found it well easy." And I think it kind of kind of falls in line with that a little bit. For yeah. Me. I mean, I'll be honest, I do watch a, a, a lot of them, but I think it's the it's the quality of the of the, the the program, the show, the film, or whatever that really that really grips me. It's not just the facts for facts' sake. Um, yeah, but it is it is a weird one. So I do I do completely get like what what you mean about it. The whole yeah. like Ted Bundy's really like good looking comments that were yeah. there at the time, and you even get it with um, with like the um, Night Stalker as well. The, like the the fans and you know the the groupies essentially, which which is what oh, it is. Really? Which, yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't really... a looker at all. Well, but then again, a lot of them aren't. Ted Bundy isn't the bad, the bad boy but, image. Yeah, that's what but it's like, oh, it he's not an absolute mutant, but he is on the inside. Oh, he's so dreamy. Like, what? I mean, the Ted Bundy <laughs> one's a weird one because he represented himself in court. So oh, yeah, it almost yeah. it certain aspects of him, especially like the the more like um, the bigger cases like Night Stalker, Ted Bundy, Son of Sam, and all that sort of malarkey. They they almost read as as films. Because the some of the aspects of the cases are so ridiculous that you're like that can't have been real. That has to have been written. Like, yeah. and I think it's that almost merging of reality and and um, what seems like should drama. be fiction. Yeah, yeah. definitely. That, that, that's that's quite interesting. But um, yeah, yeah. So that's that. That's what I watched. <laughs> we'll definitely revisit this documentaries wider definitely because there's loads yeah. out there that i enjoy but then the true crime one's always that thing for me of i have this weird bad taste in my mouth and it almost it's that thing of like yeah. vote with your wallet it's like if i don't like people not liking more traditionally obvious art but still moaning that it's sensationalizing violence i'm not going to then go oh I love a 10 part series on how this guy killed a lot of people it's like yeah oh, you know, it's weird, but it is but, interesting uh, because it's it's one of the only sort of subgenres that we don't mean you don't clash over it, but we do have very different yeah feelings towards it. Not that we have the same opinions on things, but we normally bounce around the, a similar sort of yeah. We sync up on a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. it is that one thing where I but I, but I do understand when you pull your face not pull your face, but you know, that whole awkward sort of feeling about about yeah. it. I do I do get it. I do get it. Services like Netflix, for example, I know that they've done some great documentary series. Yeah. I say great, I've not watched the majority of them, but people who are into it have said, oh no, they're really good, they're actually... There's a little bit of the sensationalising because they're telling a story, but there's definitely a more... 
personal feel to it where there's acknowledgement yeah. of, at the end of the day, these victims here. Um, these aren't a victimless crime like a joke is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or 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 a, or a violent film this is yeah. this is about reality and about real lived experiences um and w- let's just keep going down the rabbit hole because the one i want to talk about as well the one that everyone holds up is is tiger king yeah and everyone's like oh it's great it's got these funny characters for me that is the most horrifying true crime documentary out there i felt so sad watching it not just for the people obviously for the tigers <laughs> as well more but I've, it was this. It it it's the perfect example because of how wide-reaching its appeal and its audience was, and how much in the zeitgeist it became. And I was like, "Am I the? I must just be wrong because I feel like I'm the only person going. This is awful. It's an. It's not awful as in te- technically it's a very well put, well put together documentary, but yeah. this is a harrowing story about awful people doing awful things, and everyone loves it. Yeah. It's, uh, it is, I'm it's like, a very, I'm like, what am I missing? <laughs> it's a very strange, I was going to say strange documentary. I don't I don't mean that the documentary itself, similar to what you were saying, but it's a, it's a very strange subject because obviously you've got, um, what's the girl, the woman, the, the woman called it? Carol. Oh, Carol Baskin, yeah. Carol Baskin, who is going out of her way to destroy, you know, the, the, the Tiger King as much as he's trying to destroy her business. And her thing is that, oh, he's, he's locked up all these cats. How dare he? But she's locking up the cats as no. well. Can you not understand the double standard there? I don't <laughs> that that you're allowed to have them, but he he isn't. Yeah. I mean, he's gutted now, isn't he, Tiger King? Because he was expecting a pardon from Trump. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. And you know, he's not. He's not. Didn't get he's one. Not got it. No. No. Oh. Yeah. I mean, oh, in all well. fairness, Trump's got militia to sort out, and you know, <laughs> I'm just happy that we can get back to the, the age-old thing of the word Trump meaning fart. And that is I'm not... <laughs> like in the last episode, I'm definitely wrestling with the, you know, the big problems of the day. <laughs> oh, right. What have I been up to? Uh, <laughs> I, I've, I finished, literally today, finished season one of Samurai Jack. You know, okay. because I'm really current. I'm all about the, the new stuff that's out. Um, so I've never... We've probably talked about it at some point on the pod before, who knows, but Samurai Jack is one of those series where, I mean, the season opener was unlike anything else, at least that I'd watched before then, in terms of a mainstream kids cartoon. I think in the UK, at least, it was Cartoon Network, it it premiered on and had the majority of its run on. It's part of that um, Gendy Tarkovsky run of cartoons of like Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Lab. It's like the same studio. And oh, creators. I love Dexter's Lab. But then but Samurai Jack comes along, and you've got an opening episode, which is like a piece of art, which is which of the say 20, 25 minute runtime, 10, 15 minutes of it, there's no dialogue. It's all visual and music and just a montage, you know, a training montage of this character. Um, it's got a theme tune by Will I Am. Obviously, o- obviously, right. yeah. Um, and you, sound, you know what? This is when you sound really silly when you say things like this, Lewis. <laughs> I was about to go down the pretentious route and then I mentioned Will I Am, and it's like, no, no, don't worry, Lewis. You don't sound pretentious now. <laughs> I've never actually sat and watched the entirety of any one of the seasons of it before now, and they recently did in the last year or so a Blu-ray release of the whole run, uh, nice. all five seasons, because. The first two seasons, I think, ran pretty consecutively. And then it was either cancelled or just not picked up, which in the media's eyes is the same thing, but it's not really. Some of it being cancelled is like, oh, we're avoiding making this again. Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah. I think it just wasn't quite as popular at one point and they kind of just went, oh, it's had a good couple of seasons. And I think it came back for season three and or season four, maybe. And then at some point in the past... A uh, few years, there was season four and or season five to really round it off, and I think the the art style gets a little bit different, and it becomes a little more linear. Yeah. Um, story where I mean, the, the story is basically this samurai um, gets shot into the future after not defeating this evil presence, this evil villain, and then he's trying to get his way back home to undo the future and undo the evil, and after that that's basically the story sounds epic but you don't really revisit it in terms of the whole of the first season spoiler alert he doesn't get back home (laughs) he's just going to different worlds and different places in the future and fighting aliens and robots but it's 
it's just one of those really cool cartoons and in the best possible way it sometimes falls into nice background noise in terms of it's not just the opening episode there's other episodes where there's no dialogue and it's just they'll set up a scenario um and then it's just samurai jack has to defeat you know this group of bandits or this new villain and it's all just visual storytelling and music and and sound effects and it's just so enjoyable it really is just like you in real life then there we go <laughs> I just let him I've, know. Let him know I've, I've, I've toyed with the idea of um, when we do the pod to whatever we talk about to have a reoccurring question of Lewis how would you deal with being in that world but I'm not sure Samurai Jack's probably the fit that I don't know if that's the show that we start that question on no <laughs> how would you deal with being like flung into the future and travelling from world to world yeah no, so I'm not asking I, I probably wouldn't <laughs> I think I think Jack's got a bit of an edge on me of having that first episode, years of his life training, a bit like Batman goes away yeah. as a child and comes back as an adult. Obviously, I've not got that. So how would I deal with it? Badly. Yeah. Okay, cool. Excellent. That's probably the answer for most of them, actually. Badly, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much just living in that world. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I highly recommend anyone who, who either hasn't watched it before or maybe you watched it when you were younger or as a child um, and you want to revisit it, I highly recommend giving it a go the the majority of stuff i watch is cartoons as well to be fair so (laughs) but you know what i think there's there's definitely two camps um when it comes to when it comes to like sort of kids cartoons especially when you look back on the ones like when from our childhood is is some that absolutely stand up still Mm. to this day and others that don't and that's not even shitting on those ones that don't because sometimes you know what that was just it was just a kid's cartoon it's fine it it did what it was meant to do on the uh, at the time it ticked all the boxes we move on and it doesn't yeah. live past past that and that's fine. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of shite out there as well. But there's still a lot of shite around now. Um For example, this <laughs> and this. Don't do that. This. I've got to do the edit. I've got to find what three things now. What a shit bag. <laughs> there's the obvious picks of cartoon series that still hold up. You've got yeah. things like Batman animated series. I see my t shirt from last week or the last episode. Um, you've got things like Avatar Lost Airbender which is a lot more recent than Batman but again it's old enough that there's plenty of stuff around that time that doesn't hold up and even stuff now that is nowhere near the quality of well I I watched Avatar as I watched Avatar as an adult and still really really rated it it's some great storytelling and then you've got things like X-Men the animated series where I'm not saying it doesn't hold up because it's still very enjoyable but the animation quality on certain episodes is at the point where I'm like, my my nostalgia goggles and my familiarity with Jim Lee's art style and this style of X-Men and the stories kind of pastes over a few of those cracks where I right. think yeah. if I was to show this to like young relatives, they might be like, why is this held up as one of the best cartoons ever? I still really like it. I mean, like you said about oh, yeah. the, qual- yeah. the quality of the, the animation, you do get the odd, you know, repeated cell and people's there's a, there's a particular episode and i think there's a like a skateboarding superhero in it and i, and I think because <laughs> that you know <laughs> cowabunga dude <laughs> no that was a, a few years before um and i think in one of the literally from shot to shot he goes from his original just on a skateboard to yeah. having his superhero skateboard just for one just for one shot and then it goes back to normal it's like oh oh right you just just went with that Hoping for the for the best sort of thing. It. Yeah, it's like it. the podcast. Just it's just run with it. We'll, just we'll, go with it. We'll, we'll but it you know what? Right. It's a nice it's a nice segue to go into one of the things that we want to um, touch on briefly is one division. Yeah, sticking with the you know the X Men Marvel sort of sort of world. So we're yeah. a few episodes in now um, of it. We have purposely not watched any more than the initial first two that dropped. Um, so this isn't going to be a big thing about one division, a breakdown of each character within it, what we think is going on you know, within the episodes that have, that have aired. It's literally going to be just mine and Lewis's quick thoughts on the first two episodes and, and how we think it's how we think it's going. Yeah. And then the idea is that we're going to revisit the whole the whole thing once it's all aired. We'll digest it, have a bit of a chat, and then and do a pod specific yeah. on one division. Definitely, because spoiler alert, we we both loved it. 
Um, yeah. If you want to see our, our real quick thoughts, as in the night of, uh, or at least the post was from the day after, go to instagram.com slash drhpod. And we literally posted, I think it was the morning after watching. Yeah. So the, the Friday that it was available on Disney+, Plus, we posted on the Saturday morning because we both really enjoyed it, basically. Yeah, I mean, One Division, I really liked the name of the show until somebody I was speaking to didn't understand that it was like Wanda Maximoff and, and, and Vision. And then I couldn't help but hear one direction one division sort of so now it feels like this really sort of strange oh, no yeah so I might just <laughs> harry styles it. got a cameo i didn't know that what are your thoughts on it go like maybe we should go with what are your thoughts pre-seeing it and now yeah. having seen the first two episodes um it this this will sound like a criticism but it's exactly what i thought it was going to be but what i thought it was going to be was a very stylistically different way of telling a story within the Marvel Universe. Um, and it borrows heavily from House of M storyline from the comic books. Oh, God, yeah. Where Wanda's powers... Y- you realise, like, oh, she's legit one of the most powerful people in the Marvel Universe. And in the films, we've seen glimpses of it, the, the potential and the power of Wanda um, going into the point where it... Where it uh, minor spoiler for quite early in the season, she might she may be pregnant. Um, and again, there's stuff in House of M where she literally creates her own children. And yeah. it also combines that with a comic book series from a few years ago about the Vision and him trying to just raise a family in like suburban America. And it's this beautiful blend of the two where we're not sure, is this actually oh, yeah, Vision? Oh yeah, because it's the Vision... Vision and the Mrs. Vision and the two kids and they've all yeah, got the exactly. sort of... Yeah, exactly. Because almost like, like crash test dummies in the comic. Yeah. It's slightly, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And and in this, we're not sure, is it all real? Is it all a dream? Is Vision still dead and Wanda's created him? Or have they somehow salvaged Vision's brain? Is this, you know, we don't know. There's hints, but it's very much a, a, a combination of the two. And at the same time, just throwing a bit of social commentary and... Here's a look at 50s TV and 40s TV. Um, it looks like it'll go up to the 70s and 80s and people's social attitudes towards yeah. women and work and, and everything. It's, it's, an, it's got a bit of everything, yeah. Yeah, I think it's... it's what I was thinking about it before before it aired and during the, the episode um, that, oh, surely this makes more sense if you know more about the comics. But actually, I think there's pros and cons for, for each side. Yeah. The more the more you go into it, you probably the biggest question I think for comic book fans are around vision. Because obviously they know about the pregnancy, the you know, the the, the reality bending, the, the you know, the, the, the top level that, that you know that she is power wise, power set wise. Um and I think as an audience member, if you've only seen the films, um your questions and more probably going to be around Wanda and what she's what she's up to because I think for for you and uh, and myself they're like there's a massive chance that she's actually in charge of everything that's going on here but she's yeah. unaware that she's in charge of it yeah so I think it it does play with a lot of I think it plays with both camps the people who are solely based on you know the the cinema properties and people who have watched the uh, watched the cinema pro- um, properties and read the comics yeah yeah. But um, yeah, I think I think it's a great show. I think it's I think it plays into TV shows of the era that it's set in, which is great because it itself is a TV show, so it makes it way more interesting and on brand to be parodying TV shows rather than films. Yeah. Um, and for me, I just think it's great that they're using two arguably smaller characters within the cinematic universe. Giving them their own outing, their own flesh, fleshed out storylines, not yeah. supported by the other big hitters from from the films and now from and now from the comics. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think it's a really, really bold choice for them to do it the way they've done it because it doesn't feel at all like the the, the movies for me. It, it's yeah. completely its own separate, its own separate thing. Um, do you think people could watch it without having seen the cinematic universe? Probably not. Um, but I think that's... The same could be said for a lot of the Marvel stuff out there. I do think it really lends itself to 
being familiar with at least the main storyline or storylines of the MCU, at least being familiar with like the, the actual Avengers lineup. Um, and if you watch the Avengers films, you'll see glimpses of, of Wonder and of Vision and others, but I don't know how much you'd enjoy it. So there's been this weird thing online of people criticising it and really missing the point. And I know people in my own life who've who've raised that, you know, oh, it's just like a weird I Dream of Genie rip-off kind of thing, or, or it's just like a weird parody of of Bewitched, or whatever it was called. And it's like, no, no, you, well, well, yeah, it is and it isn't. It, it, it looks like it's, it's, it is that, but the point is... It, this could all just be her dream or this could yeah. all be augmented by an evil group behind the scenes so there's there's been a lot of criticism to, towards it along that I do feel it will lend itself to having a little bit of a break between episodes as well because we've spoke before about do you binge watch a series yeah. or, do, or do you leave that little bit of time in between and this has got enough of the mystery and intrigue and enough of the little weird moments where I'm like when it when it when I realised they were gonna do it weekly, I was like, Oh no, just get it all out there, I wanna watch it. But actually yeah, same. I quite like that there's been a bit of time between me watching the first two episodes and the others. And I quite like that even that we've held off by the by the time you are seeing this or, or hearing us talk about this, we may have seen more of it, if not all the series, but I like that we've waited to talk about it and even after I've recorded tonight, if I go and watch the next episode now, I'm still going to have to wait for the next two, three, four. Yeah. So it, 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 there's, there's something about that I quite like, to be fair. Yeah, I think you don't lose the, the, the bigger story when you binge something, but I feel like if a, if a show is going to take the time to put all those tiny little bits and bobs in it, like the adverts and stuff, and there's so much stuff that's jam-packed into the adverts within the show, like yeah. the toaster and the Stark and, and all that sort of stuff, that they're going to throw those things in. For me, personally, they're the bits that I tend to gloss over or, or, or shoot past when I binge-watch something. And I think having yeah. that time in between, conversations with mates... Um, you go, oh God, what did you think of that? Oh, I didn't even see it. What was it? And then you have that, those conversations rather than just hitting the big notes of of the show. Yeah. Um, you do have that time to to digest the little ones. And the last thing for me on on it is that just more Paul Bettany. Like <laughs> we like Paul. Yeah, we like Paul. Yeah, good actor. Yeah, he's a good yeah, good actor. Good actor doing good acting. There we go. Yeah. That's the right, podcast that's for this week. <laughs> <laughs> good actor doing good acting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that was slightly longer than I think we were we were gonna, oh, gonna yeah. do. I let it all you out. That's that's fine. Standard. I'll keep that yeah. in. But <laughs> <laughs> any last thoughts, Charlie? Yeah. Just uh, remember, guys, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Bye. <laughs> big howdy and a big thank you to everybody who has watched or listened if you enjoy our podcast please hit follow like and subscribe whatever platform you're on rate us and review us turn on notifications for our next episode and you'll be really helping us to grow and keep building a great community you can get in touch with us and all the socials via at drh pod or for us individually it's lewis alex ryan and underscore charlie follows Cowabunga, dude. No. Woo!